The cart's heading out onto the circuit right now. This is the fifth time the Kumo Series has been here. The 16 cars are starting for race number one. Just nine laps due to the incident we saw with Scott Pye before down there at turn three. And they're the ones that get drivers' attention. So that's the biggest fear is brakes, isn't it? Certainly is. Uh, obviously, driving with Scotty this year, I was in the bunker when that happened. And yeah, he just uh, said the brakes failed and went to the floor. So let's have a look at the starting grid here. We've got Taz Douglas and Joshua Smith did a great job to lock out the front row. As we mentioned there, Tyler Greenbridge right in the front as well. And Chris Merton, great job there in P4. But uh, Jason Heck also, he's got Paul Forgey engineering him this weekend, and that's a great improvement for him. Michael Anderson, Jim Policino on row four with Michael Kane, and Brendan Strong and uh, Steve Riffer, row five. Jack Sipp in the ex-Paul Morris car, starting out of 11 with Dean Kovacevic. Simon Emazidis is back in a touring car. Warren Millett joins us this weekend. Hunt and Cantrell. There is Cantrell going down to join his spot on the grid here. These guys now just doing a bit of a burnout. Trying to warm up the rear tyres. Also warm up the clutch before they do their real getaway uh, for the start of the race here. So warming brakes, we know it's a really warm track up here, but uh, you know, the cars haven't been out for a couple of hours. So just getting that temp back in the tyres, in the brakes, in the engine as well, and also getting the, uh, the driver's focus back on the job. Air temperature's gone up three degrees since qualifying, but the wind is incredible at the moment. 52 k an hour gust from the west at the moment, just while we've got the crosswind. From our onboard cameras, including Tyler Greenbury, the Image Racing, Luba Max, and Edge-sponsored number 13 Falcon, multi-time karting champion. Being quite aggressive on the accelerator and the brake, and that's the only way to get that temp in the carcass of the tyre. Um, you can sort of slide across the track as much as you like, which does help but uh, the brake and getting temp in the, uh, the brakes really sort of translate through the tyre. They're still not up to racing temperature, even in the first couple of corners, are they? And that's where, if you're confident on cold tyres, you can make up some big, big spots on that. Yeah, and that's where some of the experience comes in. So someone like Taz, we expect him, if he gets off the line well, those early laps when the car, the tyres aren't quite up, he's going to try and bolt for it. Plus all these guys at Winton where the same suspects are in the top three, headed by Taz Douglas. I like Josh Smith, he's coming along in leaps and bounds. Former karting champion who's been mentored by 2004 Dunlop Series champ Andy Jones. That's a good category because we've seen some names that may have sat out for a while. Gives them a chance to still race. You've got the Weekend Warriors, which is great to have out there, but you've got young guys trying to now get a spot in the development series, which oh, is hard absolutely. work. Absolutely. Justin Rougier was a prime example of that. You know, he won the championship in a car that uh, I actually drove myself uh, to a Dunlop Series championship. And, uh, you know, he'd love to get himself back into a seat in Dunlop Series or, you know, beyond that as well. So it's a great feeder ground for... Uh, potential stars. We've seen Liam McAdam and Alex Rullo move on. They were first and second in last year's championship. This is Michael Anderson, the Kenwood, Ho Kenwood Holmes Falcon, car number 11. Looking down the racetrack cars, dating back to 1998. We even had next Dick Johnson, John Bow, Shell Helix Falcon in the field at Winton. And great to have Andy Cantrell, who's stuck on the back row with Hunt in car number four. OK, so now guys will either have a line locker or something like that to try and hold the brakes on. There was a hint of vapour coming at the top of the AHS entry as a revs pick up here at Queensland Raceway for this round of the Kumo V8 Touring Car Series and it's lights out here at Ipswich and Smith goes nowhere. And also Heck in the background there, he got a terrible start unfortunately there but Josh Smith just didn't quite get it hooked up and Taz has taken the lead and Smurden. Smurden getting the better Scott start there. there. Up to second already as everybody safely through turn number one on lap one. But look at the margin that Douglas has already. This is what I was talking about. Cold tyres, he's popping in the car, got the car up the line beautifully, and now head down, bum up, get that gap, and then just maintain it from there. Anderson breaking a lot earlier than normal, and cars just swamping him. That was Steve Ripper in the Poco Holden. Oh. And he gets into the back of Michael Kane and spins him around in Whoa. contact. Jason Heck, wow. after a fabulous job in qualifying, has rolled down here at turn three. Wow, that uh, escalated very quickly there. Hopefully everyone's okay. Just tripped over, not really high speeds part no. of the circuit there, but obviously the wheels just connected and uh, threw Heck's car over onto its roof. Lexus safety car has been sent out. I'll tell you what, that corner, turn three today, has claimed a couple of victims. Uh, just talking about Scotty Pye and now Heck as well. 
a very weird incident because you rarely see that sort of contact down there. We did have a car get rolled over years and years ago on the exit down there, the late Jason Richards. Yeah. The, I think it's a classic case of just the, the wheels sort of touched the wrong spot and uh, got the car up onto two wheels and, and sort of away it went. But hopefully everyone's OK. Got the medical staff down there. They're obviously well rehearsed in uh, dealing with things like this. Right rear door of Michael Kane, the door skin peeled away from the number 37 car and makes a debut. The next sprint gas holding. Heading back into the lane here. So the safety car comes out. It will be a time certain finish. Had been shortened anyway due to the Scott Pye incident earlier. Be interesting to see a replay of that and just see how it sort of unfolded. And there's quite a bit of damage on that car as well. So let's check it Here out. That was Briffer going down from a mile back. He might have a couple of positions. He just pulled the Poco holding up. He got into Kane. Kane spun around. Heck tried to avoid him and just contact him. He's just driven over the back wheel there. Just sent the car into the air. You know, Briffer came in quite deep, but it wasn't like he was locked up out of control. I think uh, Kane just didn't... Oh, he's gone a little bit wide there. Yeah, he's gone a bit hot there and turned Kane. He just had nowhere to go. I mean, he had nowhere to go. He reacted to it, but it was too late. Wow. That's a huge incident. So the car that Jono Webb won the Development Series Championship in in 2009. Started its life as Mark Witterbottom's car in 2006. This is from Michael Anderson's perspective, the Kenwood Holmes number 11 Falcon that we were Briffer. on board with originally. And Briffer, from a mile back, made some passes up, but then it just exploded in front of us. Right, left-hand side there. That's where the incident happened. Oh. Wow. Just shows you how quickly things can turn on their head. <laughs> what got me is how quickly everything just peeled away from the car. All replays have this. So that's Briffer, the red and yellow. Number eight, Holden. It's the gentle bump on the 37. He was spinning around and heck, there's nothing you can do in that situation, can you? No, I mean, it's a classic case down there of somebody trying to be a little bit um, taking a little bit too much liberty on the way in and uh, turn Kane around and, you know, heck just had nowhere to go and like I said, the, his front wheel has just ridden over the back wheel of Kane and put the car on its side. Also saw Jack Sip getting turned around too in the uni chip Holden. It's a new car for him. Another one out of the Paul Morris stable. There is Kane's sprint gas car, the 37 machine. I think we'll be lucky to get this going again. Work going here to Dean Kovacevic's car. They were hoping for a pretty quiet race, all these guys, but their work cut out later today. These laps do count behind the Lexus safety car. I think this is going to be quite a lengthy uh, safety car period. We've just got the Ambos going out now just to make sure everything's OK. of uh, loose body work there for this car. And there is Heck just explaining to the officials what's happened down here. What a shame. He had a very strong qualifying run. It's a home round for him. The JCH Electrical and Heyman's Virginia sponsored team it was on the tour last year. You mentioned before with Paul Forgey who engineered Marcus Ambrose to his two championships back in the mid-2000s. He's got a smile on his dial but I'm sure there's... Uh, a bit of disappointment there. It's his pride and joy, this car. And no one would like to see it on its roof. The hardest part there is being upside down. He's trying to unbuckle because you're hanging upside down. It takes forever to do it. Not that I've had experience in oh, doing it. I haven't it. actually had experience, thank <laughs> God, as well. But, uh, yeah, as soon as you undo those belts, you fall straight to the roof. It's just a natural reaction. You just want to get out of there, don't yeah. you? He's got a neck brace on the moment. That'll be uh, precautionary. So, car's just going past behind the back of the Lexus safety car right now. Douglas, this is good news for the rest of the field because he was starting to stretch away, even though it was the first flying lap. Brings us back. So, Douglas Smurden, Greenbury Smith, Policina, Briffer, Anderson, Emma Zedes inside the top ten now. As bad as that looks, it's probably just you know, superficial damage, really, isn't it? Well, I think there'd be a little bit of damage on the front end from the initial hit, um, but the actual rollover is quite light. Those cars are built very, very strong, some of those older cars. 
So I wouldn't expect there to be chassis damage. Now, hard-working crew here at Queensland Raceway. Man, they've had the work cut out in the past couple of hours and... The hardest thing now is to actually get the car back on its wheels yeah. and try and get it onto the back of the tilt tray without doing more damage. Another replay here. Griffa, the yellow and red car, has come down the inside of Kane, turned him around, and Heck has had nowhere to go. Look at that. So it must be in contact with Kabasovic and Sip. And Kabasovic ran into another car that stopped. I think that was Kane when he eventually did pull it up. So multiple cars involved in this incident at turn three. You really couldn't have been any uh, unluckier there. I think you'll find a lot of suspension be quite damaged on that car. On board again, you see Briffa come down the right-hand side. Quite aggressive move there. On cold, coldish tyres too. Isn't it amazing the one that causes the incident gets away with it? <laughs> More often than not, that happens. Look, I mean, if uh, Heck hadn't have tipped it over there, it would have been a quite a light sort of contact for everybody, but... Mm. Yeah, on that second look, there's a lot of damage to the right front of the car. Luckily today, they'll have a bit of time to fix overnight before the two races here tomorrow, the Coats High Ipswich Super Sprint. Brendan Strong just sat back there and watched it all unfold. He was in the box seat and got away without any damage to the ex-McConville Lansvale car from 2001. Just avoiding all the bits and pieces and side skirts that have been left on the track. As we roll behind the Lexus safety car, <laughs> heading towards a time certain finish in a couple of minutes' time. I think uh, some of these guys like Smurd and you know, he made a great start. He'd be probably happy for the race to finish under these circumstances. Um, you know, probably would have come under a bit of pressure there from Greenbury as the race went on. Just seeing now my team here, DJR Team Penske pulling the engine out of uh, that car, checking out the damage. Let's hope uh, there's not too much damage and Scott can get back out there at least to uh, get back in the race this afternoon. Quite a lot of crumple zone of these cars. Um, so if they do have an impact, a lot of it's uh, bolt off, bolt on sort of uh, parts. Some of these older cars though, the chassis rail will actually go right to the front bumper. So if they do have an impact like that, it can really damage the car quite a lot. We must point that out because these cars are the older spec now. Mm. What we saw just then of Scott Pye's car was the car of the future chassis. Totally different to what you see right now in the Kumo Tire V8 Touring Car Series. So these guys, I'd imagine, all have their cool suit on. Uh, pretty hot conditions out here today, even though it's a shorter race. To be sitting in, it's like an oven, effectively. Um, you know, have that cool suit definitely makes your job a lot easier. Very limited airflow at the best of times even less at these kind of speeds. Yeah, especially when they're going going very slowly like this. It's a shame. Well, I thought we were going to have a bit of a race there, but uh, it's taking their time to just observe what's happened to this car. And here they go. They're going to try and roll it over and get it back on its wheels without doing any more damage. It's not going to sound... Ooh, oh. It's not going to sound good. Gentle. Yeah. Oh. A bit more work to do now with the rear of the car. How much else you can really no, do? No, that's right. There's not much they can do. So this is the final lap. He'll finish behind the Lexus safety car. So Taz Douglas will continue his winning streak. Chris Smurden will get his best result of the season in the Irwin Tools Falcon. And Tyler Greenbury will be in a good spot for tomorrow's race. Just shows you how important it is to qualify the front and get these cars, which are very difficult to get off the line. You know, get that, get the, uh, the car moving off the line and get a good start. That really set up <laughs> Smurden's race, didn't it? No, you're right. The fans loving it here today. Lots of kids throughout here for School Kid Friday yesterday and waving their coat tire flags in the gusty wind that we've got here today. But great day to be at the races, especially from down south where we've been freezing in Antarctic like conditions. It's unbelievable the weather up here 29 degrees. I had a look at the weather back home in Melbourne, it was 12 degrees today with rain. <laughs> so I know where I'd rather be. Yep. We're trying to get these legs from Melbourne. They haven't seen sun since uh, February. A little bit of a 
sun, uh, sun tan before I head home. I know that feeling. Well, the race is going to finish under safety car. Let's check out the results of the shortened race number one of the Kumo Tire Australian V8 Touring Car Series here at Queensland Raceway. Taz Douglas from Chris Smurden, Tyler Greenbury, Josh, Josh Smith in fourth, then Policina Anderson, Emma Zidis in seventh, Millet in eighth, Andy Cantrell gets a ninth, and Shane Hunt completing the ten. Sip, Strong, Griffer and Kovacevic. These guys, a bit of work to do, including Kane and Heck. You'll see on screen right now, lucky to escape that one in car number five.